going on everybody welcome to episode 388 of flow wrestling radio live i'm your host christian piles joined as always on occasion and today especially by the pride of the 610 out of eastern pennsylvania coming in at five foot two a buck 38 willie elizabeth sailor willie how are you wonderful i'm wonderful you spent some time um, in uh in the great rocky mountains yeah, I did. Learned a lot too. Learned a little bit, actually, not a lot. Some, I, some I can talk. Was about it kind of like a lot about living, a little about love? It was. It was hotter than a uchi coochie out there. <laughs> it wasn't. <but laughs> I was gonna say looking, really. I was, I was looking for uh, some kind of song lyric. That's where I went. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Twenty twenty. We. I was out there talking about twenty twenty calendar, and it's you know, we said on the show a couple times it's. It's odd and it's goofy, and the open this year is in December, and for next year everything's all messed up because the Olympic um, trials is April third and fourth. So that is they're making changes on what happens with the trials for cadets and juniors and everything else. Now and the open the open in December is actually just senior open, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then. Um, I don't think this is a state secret. Uh, I think I can talk about this. Uh, we'll find out soon have, after the show. <laughs> we're gonna have kid. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm gonna text in three seconds. Uh, cadets and junior cadets are gonna be in Vegas as well. Hmm. So they're making some. They're making some changes. Northwest regions are not gonna be there anymore, or the western region <laughs> is not gonna be there anymore in Vegas. But cadets are the cadets that wrestle in Akron are. Um, so a lot of moving parts and, uh, trying to figure out the calendar. A lot of people, you know, the people on message boards, um, saying, well, why the heck are the trials? Why the heck are the Olympic trials two weeks after NCAAs? That's not a lot of time. And they didn't take enough consideration into the college athletes. And, but the reason that it has to be the reason that the, the Olympic trials have to be that early is because the there was only one Olympic Games qualifier this year. Uh, in in 2016, there was three of them. Mm -hmm. um, this year, there's one. So we need we need our best guys. If we don't qualify a weight in Kazakhstan this year or in other Pan in other manner or at Pan Ams. We need our best guy to go and qualify the weight. So, and how uh, soon after trials, Olympic trials, is the last chance qualifier? Less. It than is a month. May May first. So, okay. tell me when we're supposed to have trials. Other than that, another week later for NCA guys, and then you're you're really yep. th that's a quick turnaround. And where are they? I mean, last time it was in Mongolia, Sofia, Bulgaria. Yeah, so not yep. not close. It pisses me off that we even have to consider. The college wrestling like that's not how sports work the professional is set separate from the college and the professional takes precedence but well, in our stupid country the ncaa is king <clears throat> and so it has to be that way because we need those young those young guys to be able to compete i don't think it's because ncaa is king it's just it's I, just how the count i mean what should they completely change the ncaa calendars to bump it forward a no i'm just saying it, it like it shouldn't matter like we it should be the, the well lucky the, the for professional us. in the senior level should take precedence but because of how good our young guys are it has to be and NCAA absolutely is king because it's most popular it's way more popular than senior yeah, level no one's denying well, I, that though, well that's what i'm talking about that's why that's why it's based around that because they're not gonna interfere with ncaa's Whereas, yeah, it's, they, it's whereas a, in a perfect or my perfect world, they w it wouldn't matter. So you're saying it's a it, tough ideally they would have the trials in March or something like that? I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's not that it's not that April in and of itself is bad. It's that I know that they have to work it around NCAAs, and I don't like that they have to do that. Like it could be in January. It could be in February. It could be March. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just so that they have to work it around NCAAs. A couple days a couple into that topic as well – a couple days before I went out to Colorado Springs, I was talking to uh, Rich Bender on the phone, and this also isn't a state secret, but there's there's like this panel 
there's like this panel, and they don't have any power, but they're not they, like they don't have any power. They, they just make recommendations, right? Um, and Debbie Yow's on it. I mean, there's some. I want to be on this people. panel. I have a lot of recommendations for the NCAA while we're at it. All right. Well, you're gonna love this one. <laughs> um, the topic of I, I'm pretty sure John Smith might be involved. I don't know. There's there's important people on this panel, but they are. I I think they're advocating for a one semester sport, hmm. and. I said to Rich, I said, well, it better not be second semester. They better do it first semester. It would be. It's 100% they're looking at it being second semester. It's second semester. They're, yeah. they're going to advocate for it to be second semester. And I think, I think mostly because football. Um, also basketball. But I don't – well, basketball no, – basketball don't matter. Well, I mean, well, basketball – I'm only saying that because, like, just media – thoughts and just like spotlight i think when we're not going up against march madness it would be better i don't think yeah, yeah that's what i that's what i'm saying but they're they want it to be a second semester yeah i know so now our our championships will be well after yeah march be madness march at the same time be after oh oh could be after yeah well it would have to be uh, they're not going to do the season in two and a half months well, right well I don't know, but of course not. Um, no, they're not going to. That right. would That's, really, that would really stink for our, our senior circuit. Yeah. It, yes, it would be awful. That will be really, really bad. Um, I hate it, and I, I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think football and basketball is who we should be concerning ourselves with. Yeah, I but. I mean, that's not the. I don't. That's not why they're making the decision. the The reason they want to do it is because it's it is insane the like course load and the things they have to do in two semesters and insane. exams. It's it's out of control i mean how many times we're, we're hearing about who was it was it rivera saying he's like studying for like all these crazy exams all these smart kids doing all this not like during ncaa's they have like tests and whatnot it's like in the middle of it it's just not it's well i think it's a straight academic consideration more than anything but it, it, it is a big academics is almost it's a huge part of it and and load is a huge part of it i mean wrestling they start practicing in what I mean, they don't really stop, but October um, or September is like preseason. Well, hold hold on, yeah. though. hold on. Get, get back to the one semester thing. Okay, so if it came one semester, it would basically be for the entire semester. And so instead of having midterms during NCAA's, you would have finals during NCAA's, which is even worse. Maybe yeah, it could be late <gasps> June. Because like, with, I mean, the College World Series goes just finished last night. Yeah, just finished. So, I mean, it's, what is it, mid-June? Early May, you're done with school. Yeah, I don't know. I, you could actually be out of school for conferences and NCAAs. Yeah, I mean, imagine imagine trying to negotiate, <clears throat> I mean, for the athletes and for USA Wrestling, imagine trying to negotiate trials, a trials process then mm -hmm. under that circumstance. Yeah, I think you'll have to, I think we'll see more... I don't know. I mean, and to be fair, we can move back our process a little bit, right? We can – we get our team a little, a little early. So maybe it can be moved around a couple weeks or something. Um, I mean, we're going to have our team – theoretically, we would have had our entire team June 15th, right? And Worlds aren't until mid to late September. So that September is – September 15th. September 15th. So, so mid-September. Three months early. Three months early. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time, right? So – you know, if they move it back to if they move trials back to July, right? I think that would be okay. And maybe there's like an open situation in June or May for for USA wrestling. And again, like senior levels should just take precedence over everything. Like that that's my personal thing. Like the professionals are the most important. But for USA wrestling, then there's okay. Well, what do we do with Fargo? What do we do with <coughs> junior and cadet duels? What do we do with Akron? Like so, all these other like lower level things. That the calendar set, they would also have to move all those around. But like that's that's yeah, that's what's going to need to happen. You know what I mean? Like yeah. But that's my point. Senior level should take precedence. Could be in August, for, for all I care, right? I mean, who yeah. cares when they are? They um, they can make they can make it work. Is my thought. 
It'll just be a be completely different calendar. It'll be very different, but it can it can be done. Speaking of trials, um, Kyle Diggs, Kyle Diggs wrestling, according to Pat Downey, well, wrestling yeah. in the room. I mean, what Gabe Dean tweeted like a month yeah. ago that he was basically getting destroyed by Kyle. So yeah, um, I I think that's why the Oklahoma State contingent is like. Why do we have to wait so long? Right. He's clearly wrestling. Just follow Twitter. Like guys who make decisions on when wrestling should happen, just just get a Twitter account because it's very clear that Kyle Dake is actively training and wrestling at least somewhat hard. Um, and yeah. I don't blame Dake for trying to Which, extend yeah. it as much as he can. I don't fault yeah. him for Which, that. On, but on one hand, on one hand, it's like, uh, hey. Why does Kyle want to wait till last? Why is he saying August 17th and getting a doctor's note? And he's obviously wrestling really hard right now. On the other hand, you should probably wrestle really hard right now before you wrestle off. So, you know, you probably shouldn't. This probably shouldn't be your warm up. Well, yeah. Let's see how it goes. As long as Jeremy Sweeney and Furman aren't around, I'm fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine with all this training. Okay. Uh, do we want to go? You guys, um,. We'll see. Now that it's crunch time, we'll see if you keep the same energy. But a lot of a lot of Michich chatter from Willie Sailor uh, and, oh, was, and wrestling nomad hitting me with. I a, was just hitting me with a take that like I don't think Michich is good. That's the whole. It's point. It's not about you thinking Michich is good. It's that I don't well, believe. Well. I, I don't believe. This is my point. This is my point. You vehemently disagree with the general the the general transfer market as uh-huh. it is now, right? In terms of you believe that you should wrestle for the country you were born in with probably some extenuating circumstances allowed. And so because of that, Mm -hmm. I would have a hard time believing that you would want anyone to have success doing that because it could set a precedent that they, that more people would then do it. And so therefore, because it goes against your ethical, moral, Mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, belief of what international Olympic sports should look like, that I don't believe you're rooting for him. You would be wrong. Um, one, what it does is, I mean, first of all, I, I don't think people will see Micic get a medal at Worlds and then think, wow, I could do that. I think they'll see, I think what they're seeing is what has already happened. They're defecting and they're on the team and they're at Worlds, period. That is the thing. That is the thing I don't like. That is my issue. These guys are on the team automatically. They are finding ways to get on in the world championships, circumventing the, the USA process. And they are Americans, right? He won a junior world bronze medal for the United States of America. That's my point. And, and, and so, I mean, the implication that I would root for an Azerbaijani over St- Stefan Meech or anyone else, I mean, Certainly, I like Stefan Micic, and that's what I've said every single time we talk about this. I like all these guys. Love Michigan. They're all great, right? It's the it's the whole it's the precedent that it sets, and um, so no, I'm not rooting against him. And the entire point of it, and why I'm getting fired up about it, why I've been fired up about it, is because Stefan Micic is so good, and I watch him beat literally our rep, kind of soundly two times. Yeah, it was 2015. But it happened. Our rep is Dayton Fix. He beat him in the two out of three. Oh, you're talk- okay. You're talking. Um, oh, I was like, didn't wrestle this year. Right. Yeah, yeah. So for for that reason, I'm like, this is not good. This is not good for USA, which is who I root for. But if if it can be Dayton and Stefan in the finals and Dayton beats him, that, that's that's best case scenario. Or if, he, if Stefan knocks out the Russian, that's great. Or really anything that doesn't hurt America, I want Stefan or any of these guys to have the maximum success because they're still Americans and I root for them otherwise. But, but it's, it's really separate from that. Um, so you tried to dunk on me. Reverse dunk. Uh, because dunk, I wanted to hear dunk. you say well, I've literally said I this. Want, you have it. You have it. You're you're because we never we never actually got into it. Well, okay, I'm saying it now. All I, right, I, I there would you ne- go. I would never root against him other than against Americans or if it hurt America if he won. Um, okay, so on that part we are on the same page. Great. And Willie, will you keep uh, the same I'm, energy now that it's crunch time? <laughs> I I just wanted to stir the pot. I just wanted to mess with you, get you talking. Well, I think I Stefan's good. I, yeah, I know you think Stefan's good, and I know you like Stefan, and I know you're not 
I know you're not anti whoever makes a team. If Dominic Abinader makes a team for somewhere else, or uh, I don't know if Pico makes a team for somewhere else, I know you're not rooting against them. I know you're hoping that he does good as long as it doesn't hurt America. I know that. I was just on Twitter. I was just doing Twitter things. All right, Twitter chose a very poor nickname for it. Bastardization yeah. of his nickname. Yeah. Sickle cell? Yeah, I deleted Yeah, I deleted that. <laughs> <laughs> like, the actual name is good. You don't need to modify the nickname. Yeah, it's S- Serbian Sickle. He's it's a, a great nickname. You know what? Let's throw in... Let's, is, get a, let's get a little anemia in there. Yeah. What's, uh... What is... What is... Where's the sickle come from? Is that on there? Like, what is that? Oh, so, this is funny. They, um... Leah Howard, the SID at, at Michigan. I think she came up with it. They were like... Asking for nicknames for something, sure. some kind of thing like the all. I don't even know what it was, and they just she just like kind of jokingly, kind of came up with it, or maybe Stefan did, but they were just it wasn't even that serious, and it definitely was not his nickname at all. So they just came up <laughs> no. with it, like it's a very new nickname. So yeah, it's great though. No, it's great. Big fan. Serbian sickle. Yeah, Howard's yeah. good. She's she's good great. She does. Michigan's great. They were. You know, one thing I was thinking about. I'm sorry, no matter. Yeah, one thing I was thinking about, like. Obviously, Michigan, all class, Coach Bormat and company. Michigan men. Michigan men through and through, the epitome mm-hmm. of class and sophistication. But think about, okay, these OTC camps. You've, have you been to any? I have not, actually. You've never been to one? No. Not even as an athlete? No. Okay. All right, well. I got close. Yay. I got fourth in the ladder one year, but it's top <sighs> three, and yeah. Well, first of all, they, they are basically the coolest thing you can go to. Yeah. It, it is mm-hmm. so awesome. Everyone's there, and they all practice against each other. It's like I saw Yanni go with Reese in Dayton one time. It was it was insane. Anyway, and they uh, and they like some of the top teams. You know, the, the U- USA Wrestling asks for like bodies, you know, to work out. So some of the top teams will bring like Nebraska brings you know, their whole team. Mm-hmm. No, Nebraska will have like eight guys. Matter of fact, when I was in Nebraska, they got an email said. You know, we got eight spots for you. Who who can you bring? Um, one year I was there. Ohio State's like whole thing was there. Uh, you know, half their team, all well, the whole team was there. Um, so it's like it's like a party, right? For, for a wrestling fan, everywhere you look, it's crazy. So so my point was th- different situation. Maybe not Michigan, but you've got a college coach that has a guy on the team that's at the camp, they would have their athletes at the camp, but what if they've got a guy on the world team for some other nation, mm-hmm. and they're there, would we let a Russian coach just come and spend a week at our national team training camp? So meaning, like, a few years ago, Bormet was, Coach Bormet was the world team coach. Mm-hmm. So meaning, like, um, he's pulling double duty. Now, to... to a double agent? Yeah. To, to, <laughs> Let's call them double agents. To curve that slightly... Theoretically, the CKWC coach, the Cliff Keen Wrestling Club coach, is uh, Bell Glasov. He's the one that's over in Euros with him. However, I understand your point. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, Sergey, that's why I'm, like, not even really wanting to use Michigan as an example, but this could happen at other schools. Well, Pen- how about uh, Penn State? Penn State, right? sure. Right, so they have Franklin Gomez. They have Bexod training there. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. But they also have Zane on the team. Well, they have Zane on the team, and so it's like, you know – I, I don't I don't know. It's kind of an interesting situation. Would you want mm-hmm. you know? And our guy rolls an ankle. Our guy does it. I mean, it's just stuff you would never want an opposing coach or the opposition to see. You could theoretically see, and these coaches should be at the Olympic mm-hmm. Training Center mm-hmm. at our camp. Yet, I'm just saying, maybe maybe this only bothers me. Maybe I am the only one that sees a slight conflict here. Now that okay, so that is probably the most interesting point in terms of. So here's the thing: CP and I are never going to agree on the, like their national transfer things because we look at like Olympic sports differently, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's just that's just how it's going to be. However, the point of guys being in the room and seeing things that to Diev or insert foreign coach here would not mm-hmm. see that is an interesting wrinkle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing willing. Very good point. All right. Very good point from Christian. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, gonna I, be I, there. I, a lot of, I don't have a lot of, like, counter to that no, other than, okay. like, yeah. It's, it's going to happen. But, what do you, I mean, you know, you, you don't want, not that Kale would, but, I, I mean, we're not going to blame any coach for 
scouting while they're at the thing to benefit a non-American, but... Like an accused, uh, yeah. Right, like, Kale's going to see what Jordan Burroughs is doing and could tell the backside camp, right? Or... Yeah. Okay, not... so Euros yeah. happened. That's kind of why we're talking about this. <laughs> um, we did kind of bury that part. Yeah, so that's what happened. Stefan Micic made the finals, lost to <laughs> um, Miroslanov, who beat Oguyev, the world champion. Very mm. interesting. So, that was a crap match. Uh, I didn't get to see it. But I know that Stefan lost in the final, but he had a really nice run. He beat um, the Atlee. Atlee. Really good win for, for Stefan. Sidikoff won. He pinned Demirtas. Did anyone see that semi? David Bray <laughs> of Flow Sports now, big shout, says that Sidikoff should have lost his semi. But no one can find this match anywhere. <clears throat> okay, so... Really? After you said it, I yes. went and talked to him, and I realized that I had watched it. So, Sitikov, right, defending world champ from Russia, wrestled Nurikov, Classic. the Belarusian, and he was down 2-0 going into, like, about the final minute, got a shot clock point, it was 2-1, and then I was watching him with Bader. I think they called it correctly. Okay. There was a 2-2 two two situation, Sitikov came out on top, and then hit a leg lace. The way it was initially scored was... Um, Points for Nurikov, reversal for Sitikov, leg lace. So two twos versus two one one. However, they reviewed it. I think they got it right because Sitikov planted him on his back. If I find it, I'll show it to you, and I think that you will agree that they called it correctly. Okay, good. Well, bad actually. I want. I want. Well, yeah, we I want, want <laughs> Sitikov to be shaken. He looked good, but I'm not like That's I'm not scary. freaking out that he pinned uh, Dimitros, who basically cradled himself. That w- uh, yeah, that was I'm like, I mean, it's just like it's just head near knee. How is your like radar not as like uh, Dimitros is awesome. Like he wins a lot of matches. Yeah, I He's don't a know. Medalist. Yeah. I don't know how. I mean, the, the response. I guess I didn't see a ton of comments, but the comments that I did see were like, uh, you know, Sitikov's still the guy. Wow, wow, Sitikov's the guy. Uh, like, I, I don't think so. I mean. Oh, well, he's being, still the champ. He's still he has not lost since. Yeah, meaning what? Will what, what? What? Like what? What are you saying here? I'm not sure I follow. Well, did, I mean, didn't you didn't you tweet something like, "Man, that he's amazing," or like? I'm I'm extremely impressed with Sitikov. I like I haven't. I would say maybe, I am the I, most worried that I've been about a 74 kilo guy since Godoyev. Here's my thing. Oh, like se- he, 70. That, see, I'm not there. No, I don't think he's as good as Godoyev, personally. Pete Godoyev. Um, now, the way I've used uh, Demertos is just like gatekeeper medalist guy. Like, he will wrestle for medals probably every year. He'll be in contention. Maybe he'll make a world final if the side is right. But, like, I view him as a rung below Chimizo. And even though he beat Chimizo, I know that. Chimizo, Sitikov, Burroughs. I think those are the big three. And then there's other guys that are good, like Abdurakmanov. Uh, and and Demirtas, et cetera. So to see him beat him, it really the margin of victory doesn't. Really, if he did like ten o'd him on five takedowns, I'd be like, all right, alarmed. But when it's a one takedown thing and you just cradle the guy or the guy cradles himself and you just take advantage of it, I don't I don't freak out. But certainly he is awesome. He is excellent. He can and has beaten Burroughs. He has beaten Chimizo. He's the biggest threat to Burroughs winning his six. He has a little of that, like. From what I've seen, he has a little bit of that winner quality because I've seen him come back mm-hmm. a couple times now, and I've also just seen his progression. The, the The way I compared it was like, right, a guy in high school, he's like ranked eighth, and then he's like fourth or fifth in NCAAs, and then he peaks like when he's 25, 26 on the senior level, mm-hmm. right? So like he is peaking at the right time where, you know, the majority of Olympic medals are won between 24 and 27 years old, right? So like he is at the age that most people are at their peak age. And he is at his wrestling peak. Yeah, so it's like he's in a good time. No, he is. He is. He's at, he is excellent. He's going to be a problem. Um, and the winner quality is is an interesting observation too. Uh, okay, speak quick quick segue here. Simple segue. Wada claims they have 100 strong Russian doping cases. Mm. Very interesting. So they've got like a bunch of lab results, and they're ready to. I think they're like processing the data right now, and so I would assume the byproduct of this will be some positive tests and potentially some bannings of athletes. 
But that's all we really know at this point. Shout out to someone on Twitter um, sent me that, and I really appreciated it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll retweet that so you can check it out too. But it came from the Moscow lab. Of course, you remember back in the – we had those emails and everything. I think from – that, that were released mm. and, and re- wrestling was implicated as one of the um, the teams that use it. Of course, it's track and field that's the biggest abusers of, of performance enhancing drugs. But it would stand to reason that it, 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 certainly wrestlers being involved in here would not be a, a surprise at all. It, now, the thing to well, remember with this is the the um, samples or whatever are only up to including 2015. Oh, so it wouldn't be anyone current. I so mean, maybe Sajulayev, like yeah. when he was young, which obviously would still tarnish. But a lot of the guys that are currently going, yeah, are not going to be the ones. Yeah, like Sidikov's not. Like Gadisov could be one that would yeah. be impacted, right? <clears throat> that would not surprise me. He was definitely on that though. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, don't get me started with the freaking Russian thing. It's a Joke. I mean, the thing the thing about it too is that it's st- it's state sponsored, right? The whole thing is state sponsored. It is a system. The government dopes their athletes, mm-hmm. and then finds ways to cover it up. It's not like it's not like everybody was independent. It's not like people were rogue, right? It's not like once in a while in the United States or other countries where somebody pops for some kind of substance that they were taking in their camp um it's not like that it's that the russian government was doping their athletes yeah. systematically right yeah. and so you know they they go through this thing with 2016 and then i don't know five minutes later everybody says yeah they're, they're, they're clear the, the officials go they're clear yeah we'll get a lot of back in let them back in um which is, I mean, and then they banned everyone stupid. that had a previously failed test, which was so stupid. Because Lebedev didn't, mm. Lebedev didn't end up going, right? No, he was their guy. And then they, I know he was their <clears throat> guy, but did he go to the Olympics? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But the the real real For dumb one iteration. was they banned their. I want to get this correct. Paralympic, Paralympic team. Mm-hmm. Yes. They're like, you know what? That's, we'll give up that's the what you do. You know First what? of all. Let's call it fair. We'll give up the entire Paralympic team. First of all, <laughs> to be so obsessed let's with call winning. Let's call it good. To be so obsessed that's with so, winning that you dope so your Paralympic athletes. How about you yeah. do a little stem cell research and get their spines working? I cannot yeah. fathom that. No, let's just get them on TRT. That – blew my mind yeah that was crazy russia is really <sighs> awesome guys <laughs> russia. So, they're so cool okay so that's that ncaa rules i have it in here dang ncaa rules um only one rule All other stuff's fine right the hair thing apparently you can go like full meatloaf now with it there's no hair length restriction oh <laughs> I was the, like, meatloaf, the, what are you going with this? The musical star, not, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, not yeah. the delicious they, uh, I was like, wait, I, was like, I don't name. understand where this is going. <laughs> they saw that. Anytime I say meatloaf, ex- assume I'm talking about the, the singing legend. Okay. They saw that story in Jersey and were like, we ain't, we ain't, <laughs> we ain't never getting in no controversy. You can have hair down to your butt. Swing low, we, sweet we, chariots. We, we yeah. don't want any part of any controversy. Yeah. So that's what happened. Um. So ha- hair can be infinitely long. Uh, we'll just call it the meatloaf clause for now until we come up I, with something better. The, you I can't wait till can they have shorts. freaking Rapunzel wrestling, tripping on her own hair. Uh, you can wear shorts now. Um, I don't know what kind of top, like, I don't know how the rash guard situation, if you, if you have to wear like a singlet and then shorts over it, over singlet. Ah, that's going to be pretty lame looking. Edinburgh. Two years ago, wore like compression tops and compression bottoms, and that's what I don't understand. Like you've been able to do this, that didn't get like banned between well, Edinburgh. Well, the and bottoms and... weren't like shorts; it was like compression okay. pants. So maybe it's like I don't know short shorts. It, yeah, but like now they're saying like the baggier stuff. Mm-hmm. 
is okay. Like Jinkos? Yes, exactly. Like Jinkos. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, have, you what? are Kyle's tan, isn't he? Did he no. did you lay what out are when you, you were talking about? Wow, <laughs> Willie is not not peaked, I guess is Willie what Willie is, is saying. I guess he is a little. There is a, a little reddish. I uh, think he reddish laid out when he called Baton Rouge. <laughs> I played spike ball yesterday. Dang you, lucky buck! I didn't. Okay, back on topic. No, wait, no more pigmentation. Wait, discussion. hold on. So I have a question though about the the short rash guard, whatever. Good. Okay, so <laughs> as it currently stands, <laughs> as it currently stands, at, at NCAA's and I believe just like at any tournament, everyone has to be wearing the same. Uniform singlet at all times, mm-hmm. meaning like when Minnesota used to do their gold singlet thing, they got points deducted, which is why J Rob's a badass because he'd be like, "Go ahead, take them away. We're winning by thirty, right?" Um, Did that so ever happen though. Yes, they won by thirty. What? They, whatever they like. If we was like, "We're winning by so much, it doesn't matter." Like, oh, okay. the, take points away. Um, that's a Joe Dubuque story. Told me that. Anyway, so do the do, does this mean that now like a one twenty five can wear the shorts? And then the, you know, the 33 can wear the regular single, and the 41 can wear, you know, a throwback single. Like, does, has that rule been loosened? I don't know. Or does everyone have to wear the shorts? I don't know. We'll That's a out. stupid rule to begin with. It right? is a horribly like, stupid rule. Yeah. Look, hey, that Minnesota guy's wearing gold, and that Minnesota guy's wearing maroon. We cannot rule? have this ca- we, ha- we can't have yes. this chaos. Hmm. That's why I'm asking about it. Question about the long hair. Yes. You know how in the NFL, if you have hair coming out of your helmet, it is part of the uniform. Mm-hmm. Is this part of the uniform? That would be a really good single leg setup. So like, but I've seen, I've well, seen no, Sardis I'm thinking saying the hair Ooh. is like, is the hair uh, is grabbing the hair a single grab? Well, I'm just part asking, of the uniform. are you going to be penalized? It's one or the other. Are you going to be penalized for grabbing the hair or can you? Yeah, I'm sure you cannot. But what if they like pull it up but not out? <laughs> Watch, I think you can leave. <laughs> you were just setting that up the whole time. That was good. That Thanks. was good, Bracky. Um, okay, here's why I said dang NCAA rules. No more hair discussion. No more shorts. More to come there. Hands to the face. Everyone's like, this is the worst thing ever. You got to fix it. And they're like, fine, we'll address it. But they didn't fix it. They just changed it, but it is no better. So what they did, rules for um, hands to the face mm-hmm. is going from Unnecessary roughness to an illegal hold. Okay? Now, here's what it says. Rules for illegal holds indicate that whenever possible, illegal holds should be prevented rather than called. Okay. Stop right there. How do you prevent hands to the face? It's not a slow – it's not an arm bar that starts legal and then something happens and it's against the shoulder or whatever. Right? It's an extended – it's a quick extension of the hand. It's not like someone starts at the at the shoulder – and just like kind of crawls, <laughs> crawls up. up there, and there it is in the face. It's not what happens, right? It's like boom. You so you, so one. Oh, we can prevent it. No, you can't. It's gonna already be over, right? One. Um, it says this will provide re- referees more flexibility to use verbal cues, issue formal warnings, and or stop the action as potentially dangerous before calling an illegal hold. So, are you st- what are you actually saying? It's not. If I pop him in the face. You're going to go potentially dangerous? It's like, I don't, it's not potentially dangerous. It's Ill, It's illegal. It, it makes no sense. Yeah, are they going to stop full Nelsons and call them potentially dangerous now? I hope so. Like, think, that's, like, how can you just stop a, an illegal hold and be like, hey, Well, because, stop. all right, here's, here's why. Here's how it actually makes sense. Not for this rule, not for hands to the face, but when it makes sense. So, like. If you've got a some sort of a turning hold or whatever, or a single leg, and it starts legal and it's about to go illegal or something, they'll get in there and they'll put your hand on and just stop it right there before it would go out just to prevent injury, right? Or mm-hmm. same thing with a shoulder and an arm bar. It starts legal and then it gets not illegal. So they'll just stop it before it goes illegal. But you can't do that with hands to the face. They're going to stop yeah, the hand they, before it gets to the face. <laughs> are they going to like go um, secret service and just dive in front of of the Anthony Ashnault extended hand to, to, to preserve the face? It's not possible. You can't use a verbal cue to stop hands to the face. Who? Why am I not in these meetings to say this? Someone who is who is agreeing this who's like, yeah, if we just call it potentially dangerous. You can't call it potentially dangerous. And you can't say, 
okay, we'll, we'll just use the potentially dangerous as like the warning mechanism. It can't work like that. It's not how illegal holds work. You can't say the first one's potentially dangerous. The second one is illegal. Like that, it just can't work. The, nothing's changed. Nothing should have changed r really if, the, if they're calling it the same. Okay, if you go hands to the face, it is a point, it is an illegal hold. I think this is uh, this is the Rexbeck lobby getting its grubby hands. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> Are, is this committee in the in the pocket of Big Rexbeck? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Big Vision. All right, that's a that's pretty woke because I didn't see one <laughs> pair of Rexbecks the last couple of years, so they are I really holding Rex out for a bit. Since John, since John Trench. Trench. Yeah. So, uh, I I think it's going to be fascinating. Although, fascin like, terribly fascinating. Yeah, car, it's a car crash. Fascinatingly terrible. Yeah, yes. it's a car crash. Car like, crash. like we said last year, when, well, like we say every year when these rules come out, we're like, like okay, this will wait, happen. Let's see, what, let's see what happens here. So, once again, we're going to, there, there's, they made the rule even more vague. Mm. And, like, you know, last year at least was like, that's a dumb rule. And it's going to, it's going to cause terrible moments in wrestling. And it did. But at least you knew there was like a black and white line. If you put your hand on its face, it's going to be a point. <laughs> now, now it's like, it's it's gray. Well, who knows what they call? Well, here's what's going to happen. One ref will call potentially dangerous for a clear hands of the face, and the next guy's just going to go straight point because maybe that guy. I mean, it's just, it's so, the, the officiating, when you talk to these refs, they're like, well, my thing, my interpretation is this. Well, this interpretation is that. Now you just made it more crazy, right? Because before, it was straight black and white. It's an it's unnecessary roughness. It's a point. Now they're like, well, we could call it potentially dangerous, or we can try to prevent it, or it's a point. I, I don't know. It's crazy. My question is, sorry. Yeah. I, I can't, hold on. Like I have an inquiry, Willie. <laughs> unnecessary roughness. If I get hurt with unnecessary roughness, I can – say i can't continue right okay so that doesn't change because we never saw this but can you imagine you could say mm -hmm. all right hands to the face i can't continue i just can't too My much God. facial trauma you could um, do that couldn't you you I could didn't really but you could do it before really? also that's what i'm saying i never i never realized that i'm surprised people didn't flop like Oh, okay. no. Steph, Cur Steph Curry. Yeah. Thankfully, wrestling wrestling people are not really like that. But you could do it. You could definitely do it. Um. Really? Why? I should it be maybe? Should it be maybe like stalling calls? Like one hand to the face warning, second hands to the face point, or second hands to the face warning. Like third is a point or something. I mean, I, I agree that hands to the face needs to be subdued i mm -hmm. it can't you know you can't just heisman trophy guys in the in the face the whole match but in the course of a combat sport it's gonna happen and so you do it once hey chill out you do it twice come on this is your last warning you do it three times you're giving up a point man three that's very charitable i mean if you do it twice or you know yeah yeah i know you know what I mean. so you know the classic thing you see in like so many wrestling matches where they get really physical. There's like that one part where like one guy will do a hard club, the other guy will come with a hard club, and then the ref will just get in and be like, "Guys, all right, relax." It should be like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, they messed this up. The biggest news out of this is, first of all, the biggest news is that the Committee on Competitive Safeguards and Medical Aspects of Sports, aka CSMAS, <laughs> is how it was shortened. Um, Much shorter. CSMAS is a weird name. Anyway, the big no, big news is that video review challenges medical forfeits and weigh-ins. Nothing changed. So guys are going to forfeit out of conference tournaments again. And video review will still be crazy, and no weigh-ins will still be the same. Sweet. So nice. The big things that I, I mean, so, hands so of the face was not... like big this year, but I don't. I still don't think it's that big. Video review medical forfeits, much more broad impacts to me. Than are you saying? Face. Are you saying? Um, first of all, what weigh-ins? Why would they change? What, they what were going to we change an hour to two hours. Right. Okay. Um, and then video review. Are you saying that they? Because like a month ago, they proposed that video review at NCAA's be done up top by an independent uh, panel. Are you saying they? 
they yep. didn't that was not approved correct there nice. were no there were no changes confirmed to video review and medical forfeits will not count as actual losses so you're still reviewing your own wrong call awesome so there's no bias there okay cool <clears throat> this is a very productive also meeting. no penalty for challenging and being wrong oh because okay. remember they proposed like getting a stall call if you're wrong yeah and that's not a thing now okay. now i gotta look up who's on c-smas yeah who's on c-smas who's on c-span c-span 2 and c-smas is that like the third one all right what other things um Oh, I know what time it is. Found it. He, we got <laughs> who's on it. Hold on, who's on Cease Mass? Wow, this is a very cut to This is a very wow. Uh, wow. lengthy group of people here. Kim Terrell, Sean Arendt, no. Gabe Feldman. No. Don't read what? these names. Well, okay, no, I don't, don't know who these, these, these no people. One, no, we don't no know who. We literally none of okay, us know who any of these people are. Read, only read ones that you know. Then Order. I don't we know don't any of them. Okay, then don't read. Okay, them. does it say like where they're from or yes. what organization they're with? Yeah. Yes, it says you know it says their their school, it says their conference, it says their title. So there's no wrestlers on there. This is such a long list. We would he would still be reading it, guys. <laughs> He'd be Correct. like Kim Gruber, Niles Osborne, <laughs> Buddy <laughs> Tevens, head football coach of Dartmouth College. <laughs> Buddy Tevens. All right. I think he's making rules for wrestling. That's he definitely awesome. knows. You know, let the hair go, boys. I That's say. what cracks me up about these committees is people with representation that their school doesn't even have wrestling. They don't have wrestling. Got some, some dude from Dartmouth. They also have alcohol and other drugs counselor and educator Josh Ella from Swarthmore College representing Division Three in the Centennial Conference. So they got the dare counselor in there. <laughs> <laughs> and he is on he is on the committee until <laughs> August of 2020. <laughs> Oh, that was my no. dare counselor in fifth grade. My fifth grade. Bracky's fifth grade dare counselor is like, let the hair go. That's what I say. I'll tell you what. The dare counselor, what do you think hands to the face should be? Nah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah potentially dangerous. What I could these people possibly know? How, like, they're, they're, I mean, I get it. Like, okay, there's a wide variety of sports and all this. But, like, what do they do when swimming comes to them with a – Wow. Recommendation. What do they do with them when baseball comes in? The recommendation, and they're just like, oh yeah, I don't know. Looks like Vanessa on here is a sandwich artist at Subway. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> five bucks. Five bucks. <laughs> KB's fifth grade dare teacher <laughs> is a is a Twitter account and like. Five oh my gosh, <laughs> Brad Bracky's dare counselor. There's the handle. You got. It's a race now. The race is on. Who's going to make the Brackey's Dare Counselor? Will it be done also, before the end of the show? Yeah. All of these. If you create it and ask a question, I will ask this question on Questions with Friends. <laughs> but the time is now. There are professors on this board. Okay. This is absurd. It's good. No, it's good. You just. Um, it's perfect. All right. Cease mask, let's go. I'm upset. To uh, your maybe favorite part of the week. It is Kyle Brackey's Alien Hour. Nice. Yes. Uh, so last week, Willie requested aliens. and <laughs> Yeah, um, baby. Although I did not appreciate his uh, attack on Twitter, I will call it. It was an attack. It, w it was not an attack. It was a suggestion. Okay. It was a hit piece. There's a, there's a comment or a suggestions box that you're supposed to leave that stuff in, not on Twitter. <laughs> but anyways... So back in April, I reported on how Navy pilots can, there's a process now where they can report sightings that they see, mm -hmm. um, where in the past there was not, and they were often ostracized and punished almost for coming to their superiors with unidentified flying objects and, and stuff they encountered in the air. Well, now that there is a process, uh, U.S. Senators are now being briefed on what they are nice. finding. And this should just go as more evidence for CP to believe that the U.S. Senators are having confidential briefings on what the yeah, Navy dude. pilots are finding. So um, it says, a group of U.S. Senators, including the Vice Chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, received a classified briefing about a series of reported encounters by the U.S. Navy with unidentified aircraft. Hmm. So you don't think that... If our senators are hearing these confidential briefings and there's now a process with this in the Navy that there is something out there, you don't think that? Well, it could be anything. I mean, what sort of 
technology is the enemy working on that we don't know what it is. We've got these crazy drone things. Who knows? Uh, first of all... So you think what they're seeing, what the Navy pilots are seeing, are from other countries or our enemies? Could be. Or our country. You don't know. Oh, wow. We're on the cutting edge of technology. Do you know how much stuff we probably don't know about the technology we have that is just completely, like, kept out of <laughs> the... What? What, Willie? That's a, a 100% fact. There is there is stuff... You, you could be in the military. You could be a military pilot. You could be a Navy pilot, Air Force pilot, and not know the... You know, the stealth bomber, who knows what the next thing is that we have? What? I just can't stop thinking about Kip. Kip Kip Dynamite. <laughs> what did he say? He said, yes, I love technology. <laughs> uh, no, Piles. There's aliens out there. There's aliens on our planet. And uh, they're seeing alien whoa. stuff. The whoa, senators whoa. aren't wasting time. And then, I mean, President Trump also got a briefing on it. So it's going all the way to the top. So here. I should just refresh his Twitter because he's not going to be able to keep this secret for long. Wait, hold on. <laughs> no hold on. way. Other than, well, although he still never released his tax return, so maybe he will. You know, he's kept that a secret. You know, Bill Clinton, Bill, Bill Clinton tried to get them all declassified. Yeah. And they wouldn't do it. Why wouldn't they do it, Piles? Because, well, who knows why? I mean, there's... I don't think it's. I'll tell you why. Because there's aliens. No, there's there's just technology out there that exists that we maybe are working on that we don't want the Chinese to find out about. Can we run back to Willie said there are aliens on the planet? Yeah, he. Did I feel it. like Whoa. that was glossed over. There could be. No, I know, but like the aliens out it's, there, not, not there's a lot of planets. Be, makes are. sense. Be, aliens on the planet's a little more pressing and interesting and concerning and. <laughs> and then the other thing I, I mean, want to talk about. Hold on, let Kyle go. The, the other thing I want to talk about is, um, I know CP mentioned this, so I think you've watched it, the Bob Lazer thing uh -huh. on Netflix. I did. I haven't listened to him on Joe Rogan yet, but I want to. I, I've done both. Oh, you've done both. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are your thoughts on him and what he claims? Uh, B Bob Lazar to me is is very interesting because I find him very. I think I have a good, uh, I have good instincts in judging people, and like I think he seems pretty genuine, and like this has basically ruined his life in many ways. And he's like, I, you know, he's like, I don't like that I've emboldened. He he hates everything about it. He, he's, this is not a guy seeking out fame. He seems to be a very, uh, what I would consider a stable genius, as a uh, our president would <laughs> describe himself. I would describe Bob Lazar as a stable genius. Very smart guy who. Um, made some mistakes and got busted showing his friends who now here's one thing that that I didn't like about that is they said on the Rogan show all these friends and Bob went out into the Nevada desert and like they know where the flight patterns are and Bob would show them he's like they fly on Wednesday nights at this time we'll go there but yep. so they did it like three times and the third time they like had a camper out there and all this stuff they were like reckless and got caught but they're like, all these people corroborate the story and saw the same thing, and they don't even get along anymore, and they're not even on speaking terms and all this stuff, but they all agree on one thing, but they saw this stuff. Can we get them on camera? Right. Can it not be the guy telling us that they said this? Like, you know what? Interview them. Put that on the record. Can we get someone to corroborate Bob's story, right? Because if it's true, and, and basically what Bob did, it's like he was given the alien technology, he was given them stuff, and he was supposed to reverse engineer and like work on it, and he's you know it was very amazing stuff. But like, I don't know. I just need more than one guy to believe. If, if well, there so are. Here's, here's my thought. Hold on, Willie. Hold on, Willie. If this got out like it did, if if everything played out exactly how Bob, how could this have only happened to one person? How could only one person come out with this information, uh, this intelligence? Because if the U.S. government does such a bad job of suppressing this. And keeping it a secret, it should just be common knowledge at this point. This one scientist is just walking around talking about it, going on interviews left and right. Um, I can't believe they haven't snuffed him out, which probably since he's gone on uh, radio and whatnot, that maybe that's protected him. But Did they do uh, DMT before he went on the show? I have no idea if he did drugs. I, I don't, he didn't seem like a recreational drug user. Yeah. No. What, what, Bob what Lazar has been doing this. Bob Lazar. Since late that 80s. story, he's done this for decades. Late His 80s. story's been out there, yeah. So, um, I don't. It's kind of odd to me that you know there's a Netflix documentary on him that just came out, 
and there's Joe Rogan stuff, and there's there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, it, his story's been out there forever. Yeah. So, uh, no, it's not enough for me. <clears throat> I, I I'm certainly. But the, not- there are. There are stories, though, Christian. It's like it's not just one person. There's it's it's tough to ascertain too because it's like that Bigfoot stuff. Like you go look at a Bigfoot video, it's a Bigfoot evidence. Uh, it's all junk. It's like you can watch twenty hours of Bigfoot stuff and, and spend a month looking at Bigfoot stuff, and you might find like one snippet of a video that's actually like, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, and the same thing with the alien stuff is that you watch all documentaries and shows and it's all just junk and speculation and no evidence. But well, once in a while you get is, you get like what? I was gonna say this is the same thing. It's just like <clears throat> No, you get accounts. There's there's other people. There's other there's been other military personnel and you find little facts that like they corroborate it too. Okay. Yeah, but again, I, I think CP's point is, so like, generally speaking, the greatest form of knowledge is passed down knowledge, right? Like, we know this to be fact because of the course of 10,000 years, this is what happens over and over and over and over and over again. So how how do more people, how do more generations of people not know from different parts of the world, uh, from different walks of life, uh, uh, What are you about talking this? about? What are you, t- watch Ancient Aliens, dude. It's every single angle, every single culture. Why are you laughing? Every single culture since the beginning of time has aliens and flying objects and stories of flying objects. And they say, they say ships and they say this, you had Nazca lines from 10,000 years ago. Uh, people, uh, civilizations making structures that can only be seen from space. Uh, how how does how does a civilization an ancient civilization in uh china and an ancient civilization in india have the same symbols hmm. i don't know <clears throat> ancient aliens all right if we need to get into kyle brackett do you have anything else to add no i just wanted to get the discussion going around bob lazar and uh the most recent update on aliens in our government all right well i will watch the bob lazar thing <clears throat> Bracky, I need you. I actually found the Rogan thing actually more. I learned more on that. There were more. I thought there were better details on that than the documentary, which is like kind of weird. It's like, why did you not put this in the documentary? You had all these people that saw it. Maybe throw those dudes in. All right, so I will listen to the Joe Rogan (laughs) thing. Bracky, because Willie's on his ancient aliens kick. Can you do something on the Anunnaki for the next alien hour, please? Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. We don't. Don't normally take requests. <laughs> um, it's kind of outside sin- the process. And as well, we I, mentioned, I, there I, is a suggestion box, but okay. He asked nicely. He did ask nicely. Well, here, what, how are you gonna? How are you what, gonna? What, how are you gonna make fun of ancient alien show? Me and the ancient alien show, which is all anthropological evidence. But it is then, not Willie. Request, it is not ancient aliens. That, is a load of crap. <laughs> oh wow! No, it is not. Yes, it how is. Gonna, yes, it and is. Then Willie. You're gonna ask Give me, give me some evidence. And yet, but yet, the, here's the hypocrisy. You're going to ask for the Anunnaki, which they talk about all the time. Wow. We're not getting... Okay. <laughs> Willie, Ancient Aliens is, full, is a load of crap. Bracky, no, it please is look, not. Please look up uh, Anunnaki. I will put it in the suggestion box. Thank you. Isn't that a kind of sushi roll? <laughs> Pretty sure that's a sushi roll. I'm sure it is somewhere. Okay. Everything on ancient aliens is anthro. It, it, it's it's fact. I mean, you the, the speculation they go, you know, when they say, is that evidence of? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, you can say, yeah, they're they're being sensational, but there is. I mean, it's evidence. All right. Okay. We've it's got physical the, evidence. He's got the documents, just like Alex Jones. All right. Next, we have friends. They have questions. It's time for questions for friends. First question is from Sammy Brooks's mullet, which Jeez. Sammy Brooks doesn't have a mullet anymore. So this guy literally freed himself from the mullet, and the mullet is just walking around by itself. And but he's, he's very active. Very active. Solid, solid follow. When do you think Teasdale will announce his transfer destination? We all know he is in the Hawkeye Wrestling Club room right now, but not when. But when will he make things official with Hawks Wrestling? Um, so I don't know what the process. Is. Yeah, Gavin is in Iowa. I think he's staying with 
Iowa guys. I don't know if he's in school yet. I don't know if all that stuff is official, but certainly his intent, um, I would imagine, is to wrestle at Iowa at some point. Though I don't know how the transfer thing works. I don't know about like enrollment, etc. But I think ultimately, yeah, he'll be at Iowa. And yeah, everyone says he's doing awesome, which is great to hear. Obviously, last year was bad for Gavin and did not go well for him. Not just because he didn't wrestle and do stuff. Was, I think there was clearly other stuff going on. So all we want is uh, Gavin to be right and um, well, the, want the, to see him on the mat doing the, well. The tricky mm-hmm. thing there, right, mm-hmm. obviously like for scholarship and money and all that stuff, like it does make sense for him to establish Iowa residency. That will definitely take at least a year. Some say it's two years. But with the running clock stuff, even with the way they're giving out extra years – he still can't just like ho- probably wholesale take a year off. Like he will probably still lose a year. You would think, but um, I'm not sure. I know it's a little different now with the way they're giving out extra years, so maybe not. Right. But I would, I don't know. I'd be careful with yeah, that. Yeah, but uh, here's my thing with it is that I keep getting, you know, Christian said it, he's doing great in the room, and I keep getting glowing reviews, and I mean, you never know how how legit rumors are or information that gets passed to you but i mean he's apparently doing so well in the room that's like how do you keep this guy out of the lineup and i was very much all in for this run in 2020 and if he's the best option i don't think you i don't think you that, that the conversation in the iowa r- coaches room is going to be look, let's see if he can – let's sit him out so, you know, he can have four more years and, you know, get an extra year in 2024 or something. I mean, if he's the best option, I think they they start him. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I think that would be smart. Okay, next question from the gravy train. Not Nick Gravina, though. I call Nick Gravina the gravy train. Maybe that's just me. Is there a Russian or international wrestler that can be compared with their international – Compared, uh, sorry, this sentence is not quite right. International success that also dealt with domestic threats as consistently as JB in this era, i.e. beaten world champs. And how do they compare? It's it's funny because we always talk about the depth of Russia. Russia is so deep. They're so great. They're so this and that. But, like, the answer is really no. There hasn't been a guy in Russia or really anywhere that has kept off this many elite people right there have been russian weights where two really good guys and one guy wins and the other guy wins worlds and then maybe later the other guy wins worlds but there's never like one dude that's like no go away beck bulatov go away this guy go away that guy go away david taylor go away kyle day but isn't that the point though is that they actually do not like that isn't that the point of depth that they actually do knock off that guy and, um, and they have great they have a greater variety like united no, states th- no that's not the point the question is is there been one guy that has in any country other than America that has kept off the team so many good guys. I know. I know I'm, I'm not talking about their question. I'm talking about your well, comment about depth. Yeah. Like having a, having a oh. wide variety of medalists is to me what would define depth. Well, um, yeah, but I, I don't see what, – what's their weight that's like that, 70, 74? I mean, they're <laughs> good there, but then I'm like – I just when, – when, when, when you have a rotating cast of characters and you're still winning medals – that to me is what is what depth is, and Russia has that better than anyone. Yeah, perhaps I, I see what you're saying, but but no, they, there hasn't been Go ahead, a guy that held off. Anymore. Well, I mean, but what? Yeah, but one guy hasn't held held them off. If if Sargush held a spot for a decade, then you'd say yeah, that's that's there's an there's a situation like Burroughs, but. That hasn't been the case. And I think, yeah, um, when you talk about legacy, I think part of Jordan's legacy has to be not only what he did at the world level, but who he, who, what he did domestically. I mean, anytime we talk about an all-time NCAA list or an all-time, you know, uh, an all-time international wrestler, we, we always talk about um, – what they achieved at NCAAs or what they achieved at uh, what medal did they get at the world championships? You don't often have to use or, or the opportunity to use who they beat in the wrestle off <laughs> to, to keep that streak intact. And I think in Burroughs, you have to talk about that. Yeah. So no, is, is the, 
is my answer. No one's had to uh, beat off that many guys. Uh, all right, now. <laughs> Dad, go on it. <laughs> I hate all of you. Everyone watched the last episode of season one of Silicon Valley. I hate all of you. <laughs> Man. I don't understand what's Kyle. happening. But Kyle. Kyle. clearly you, missed you it You didn't then. catch that. I'm checking to see about my fifth grade dare teacher's Twitter account. Oh. Well, hopefully that's There's not one, one of the man. guys that CP had to finish off then. Stop it. No. I hate you guys. Beat off, he said. Stop. <laughs> oh, okay. I got it. Um, Chris Radke. Will <laughs> oh, that sounds a little w- too will close to home. Will Flow ever do Division two or three college rankings? Well, we never have, but I won't say we never will, but I think people like Flow because um, – it's authentic, and we don't try to BS, and none of us know anything about D2 or D3 wrestling, and we would want to do the job well, and you can't just say, oh, hey, Nomad, do D2 rankings. That would yep. be like an insane ask. Yep. So open invitation. If you think you could do really good Division Two or Division Three rankings, hit me up legitimately. See what we can do. If you would do a good job and you're an expert about Division Two or Division Three, maybe we will do that. So I will not say never. Maybe this year will be the year. Uh, let's chat. But um, Wrestling Nomad is good at high school and college and international stuff. He's not good at D2 or 3. I, I do not have the capacity in my brain to add D2 and D3. No. I'm sorry for all the people who love D2 and D3. You're wonderful people. but I, You don't know that. I don't have <laughs> you room don't know in these the people. old noggin. I, lo- I love the nomad like ex- <laughs> like you know what I hope everyone's healthy. It's like you know what D2 everyone people- gets to the tournament safely. I don't think D two or D three people are evil people. Um, I think it's BS that you haven't gotten season tickets to every D two and D two. You don't have any Warburg tickets. Do you even have a single Warburg ticket? Lake Erie did a pretty cool uh, like oh dinner situation. This is on Zeb's Twitter. Look it up. All right. Um, shoot. I accidentally opened something. Okay. Um, this, is, this question really put me in a bind uh, from Will Uh-oh. Ferrero. Would you rather have 10 weights at the Olympics with eight competitors at each or the current six-weight system, <clears throat> men's freestyle? This really made me think and think and think. And I've reached my conclusion. I would rather have 10 weights with eight dudes than six with whatever. And I know that would mean some Americans maybe don't get in or whatever, but I think that is, would be awesome. I just think having the 10 – weights every single year that continuity would be awesome so even though it's only eight hey man it's really hard to get to the olympics top eight only top eight make it and maybe we go to single bronze then hopefully can you imagine eight man bracket with double bronze that would be insane well i think if it was, well if it was eight man so. bracket they would have to do round robin all right let's do a bracket no that would be stupid not as stupid Start as the quarters. eight man round robin wrestle seven matches yes no, that's horrible. No, eight is fine. Why? We're like, Three these matches. are the best eight guys. Three matches. It's fine. Three matches Ooh. is just fine. Then, but, okay, well, that's wrong. The Seven matches determine the, be- the person with the best record or the highest whatever. Oh, yeah, that'll be what a, what a win. What a climactic moment when they tally up the round robin. Well, having an eight-man bracket is really stupid. Um, really stupid. You will see it at Pan Am Games. You'll be like, man, this is this is stupid. We had eight-man brackets at Region B, and it was pretty awesome. It was really, really good region. <laughs> we had Manassas Park, Buffalo there. Gap, Strasburg, Brentsville, Clark County. It's pretty tough. I'm fine with Grundy situates. County auction. No, Grundy was not. They were. They're down there in other part of the world, really. Okay, what Willie weigh in eight? Eight-man br- brackets. Forget it. it's eight-man bracket, obviously. But like, would you rather do the ten with eight or the six with sixteen? Well. I, I would rather do the six with 16 because I want to see a tournament, but I hate six weights. It's adject disaster, but also the math is off there. Like six times 16 is 96. Eight times 10 is 80. So nine man, eight, eight times, eight times 10, you're losing guys. Um, I would beg for four more per bracket and have a 10 man bracket. Well, it sounds like it'd be two more per bracket. There's eight. Oh, yeah, ten, uh, two more. Yep. Let's do that. Okay. Seven. Go back to seven weights. That was perfect. But the weight distribution should mm. be better. But seven weights was great. 
This person is trying to divide this family, and I'm not going to have it. I'm going to read it as, as a warning to any of you that are trying to split this family up. Oh, Veronica yeah. snyder Live, which <laughs> at Infinite KBDR, which sounds pretty dangerous, yeah. but you can't give yourself. Kyle, did you give this person an Infinite KBDR? No. Therefore, it's a fake KBDR, and we W zero. So only one person can give the Kyle Brackey danger rating. And spoiler alert, it's Kyle Brackey, not Veronica snyder Live. And the question this fraud asks, which FRL host is the most expendable? How dare you? Nobody's. How, how dare, dare you, you try to break this family up, to try to divide us? You know what? This you is unifying a, us. No, look. We all love each no. other, right? You know, we don't want to beat each other. Uh, Willie. But, <laughs> you know what? I was going to say the same thing. It's so funny you say that. I was going to say the same thing. Wow. I was kind of thinking it, too. <laughs> Did anybody get? Did anybody get what <laughs> I was wins. trying to do there? Yeah, we all. It was like yeah. Chenzo. Wait, when Chenzo was like, "Oh no, you know, we don't really have any rivals. You know, we just want to be a buddy." Definitely Ohio State, though. Yeah, that was funny, but I did not actually pick up that that's what you were doing. Um, this was the hot topic at my place of work: are Cheetos chips? What? Absolutely not. Mm. They're they're not chips. Where do you work? Mm. Where there are people that think Cheetos are chips? Chips or chips? Chips? Chips or chips? Like potato chips? No, man, probably chips. think Cheetos, Cheetos are like are sandwich. Cheetos <laughs> are like Cheetos are like. Uh, <laughs> I think Cheetos are a hot dog. <laughs> Signed, Wrestling Nomad. I, I'm a, well, okay, so well, now hold on, let's think about <laughs> no this man. now. He's not ready to rule are that Cheetos out. Are Cheetos a hot dog? Curly fries are still fries. They're just curly. So are Cheetos curly chips? They're not curly. No, they're not curly. They're, they're these. Not, they're rods, essentially. Yeah. What am I thinking of then? They're, they're snack rods. The, what are the curly <laughs> What are the curly ones that we have over in Snack Nation? Snack rods. They're Fritos. 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 <laughs> Fritos. Yeah. Fritos. Wow. How do you not know this? As the resident. Snack uh, I don't eat a lot of Cheetos. I don't think you I eat any Cheetos. Snack. Apparently. All right. <laughs> Kelly Howard, father of Robert, and overall nice guy. Oh, asks, should be good. What was Willie at Flo's biggest airport slash travel screw up? Uh... I don't know that I've ever had a bad one. I, I feel like Willie, I'm but always I, like, he's missing this flight, and he makes them pretty regularly. Were you talking, a, Willie, about on Twitter that you would either go to the airport a day late or a day early? Um, Did you ever go to the wrong airport? <clears throat> no. Wow. Nope. That never happened. But one time I did for real, like I was traveling so much and, I don't know, working so much, I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. I went to the airport and they're like, "Yeah, your flight's tomorrow." I was like, "Dang it!" How about today? I was like, "I, I was like, no, no, it's not. It's today." <laughs> and they're like, "They're like, no, look, it's tomorrow." And I was like, "Crap! That was a waste of an Uber." Uh, how did you possibly argue that with them? <laughs> yeah, I love the argument because I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't make that mistake, and I made that mistake. Holmes and Vinny one time went to the wrong Dallas airport. Oh yeah. They yes. went to Love Field. They didn't know there was two. Yeah, there's two, and they're both big. Yeah. Okay, so not that bad. Not that bad. Good job. Mine was definitely and then, missing my Vegas flight. Then How'd you miss your Vegas flight? So remember two years ago, there was a Women's and Greco Open that Bader and I went to in Vegas, December 2016. Uh-huh. Okay, so that was two weeks after CKLV. So my, my two flights that were – right next to each other were both from Vegas. And when I went to look at my itinerary, I looked at my CKLV itinerary from two weeks prior. Oh. So I was like, oh, oh I can wait. leave in an hour or two, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. And I had a much earlier flight to leave from the open than I had to leave from uh, from CKLV. Man. So I missed it. And then I ended up in SeaTac, which is Seattle-Tacoma Airport. Don't Which is that's not real. That's what that's that's what's called. Anyway, Who's which is farther case? away from Austin for those of you who are bad at geography. Sounds like something you need a vaccination for. <laughs> are your ZTAC vaccinations correct? And I ended up getting home a full twenty four hours later than I was originally supposed to. Okay. That was uh, bad. That wait, I have bad. I have two. I have actually two oh, wait, that I messed more. up on. One time this is before I worked at Flow, but at Fargo, I got real banged up on the last night. Oh, my gosh. 
Shocker. That's that's so weird. And, and the la and <laughs> I went to the airport and I fell asleep. I was waiting for my flight and I fell asleep. <laughs> and I was so I was so asleep that I just woke up like <clears throat> eight hours later. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what happened? Where <laughs> are we? And yeah, I don't know. Then I had to get then I get home. The war actually the worst the worst one in history, in the <laughs> flow history, I believe. I'm is in when the bathroom got... of the of the plane. Oh my god, that Woke actually happened. Bu- oh my gosh. Not me, it was Bader. Did I ever tell this story on the air? Oh my. I don't know if you should. Well, it's it's not that bad, but it's like so, me and Bader were at a tournament. I don't know what tournament. I think it might have been a. Irrelevant. It was either a Vegas. It was either a Vegas trip or an overseas trip. It was the longest flight, and Bader. Me and Bader got banged up the night before because that's what we do, and, but I I was fine. I was like, ready to go, and Bader, Bader was like hurting, and, I see him. He reaches, he's, his eyes are closed, and he's reaching in the pocket of the thing, of the seat in front of me. I don't know. I think he was looking for the puke bag. I don't know what he was doing. But anyway, he starts sweating profusely. Uh, and then he goes to the, then he goes to the, he's like, I got to go to the bathroom. So he goes to the bathroom. He, and like 20 minutes, I'm like, what is he? I keep looking back. I'm like, is he alive? And on the, on the intercom comes, Uh-oh. they can't land. We need a, do we have, is there any medical person? Is there any doctors on the plane? I'm like, what? I'm like, <laughs> Bader's really bad. I'm like, this is bad. This is going to be bad. <laughs> and I'm looking back and, and I don't know, like two hours later, Bader comes back and I'm like, Bader, what happened? And he's like, he's like, D-, I was like, was that you? He's like, no, it was some old big lady like she couldn't breathe or something i'm like well, where were you he was like she fell down right in front of the bathroom door i stayed two hours i was in the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't get a run starting her door i think the door would open oh my <laughs> it wouldn't he's like he was peeking out the door every five minutes better although spin zone can you imagine if you had an emergency situation, you needed to use the restroom, and the there was a blockade, you couldn't yeah. get there. Unless you could really hurdle. And you cannot, your vertical is severe. At altitude, people don't realize you cannot jump as high. So you might think you could get over the big lady, but it's not, you might not be able to. That is a great Dang. story, and I don't know how I've never heard it. Poor guy. We have two Bracky stair counselors. One of them is a picture of Kyle Bracky, which means... I no, that's wrong. I'm, I can't be the dare. He's counselor. not the counselor. Kyle it was not his the counselor. counselor. The first person had just that that fat kid in the singlet picture at first. I was like, change it. Then he changed it to like the Ben Stein guy. I was like, change it to like a. Mustache. Now it's like a cop guy, like you suggested. Yeah, I had to. I really had to handhold this process. Should I send him a picture of my fifth grade dare counselor? Yes, <laughs> if you have that, I, I'm sure uh, you're. Your mother is probably listening. She normally does, so maybe she can. I know who it is. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's small town living. It is. (laughs) Somehow there's not a lot of pictures on the internet of people wearing dare shirts, although there is this one of what looks like a crackhead with a gun. (laughs) (laughs) Smoking in a dare shirt. All right. Um, now right. we're down the dare rabbit hole. We're down the dare rabbit hole. I swore we wouldn't do that this week, but once again, we find ourselves down the dare rabbit hole. <laughs> I don't know well, why they have the gun. All right, last question. Did, did you see Did you see the new photo of Kyle Bradkey's fifth grade dare teacher? With the mustache guy? Yeah, you told him that he needs a mustache, and boy, <laughs> does he have a mustache. He's got a big one. All right, sheep squash. With Mackay Lewis coming out last year and surprising everyone with his run at Nationals, which freshman do you think could make a similar run? Oh, boy. I don't know. Aaron Brooks. No. Aaron maybe. Brooks. Aaron Brooks, yeah. Aaron, I don't, Aaron Brooks is not going to wrestle this year. But it would have to be somebody that's a red shirt, gray shirt, right? Yeah. Mackay was a red shirt. Hmm. I don't Man, know. I don't think Sasso, maybe? 
Sasso or Brayton? Jacory Keener. Though, what, I, about David Carr. David Carr. Those are Lee. But the only thing, I, I feel like they got so much shine as a high schooler, as a red yeah. shirt. But I didn't get that much shine. So, like, if if Sammy Sasso had Makai's year last year, where he had a two-loss season, he wrestled – well, I, you know, he wrestled in the ACC. If Sammy right. Sasso had Makai's year last year, we wouldn't have been that surprised. It would have been surprising. He knocks off the defending champ. Yeah. Knocks off the bull. Okay. But it wouldn't have been that surprising. I think I think a lot of Makai's surprise had to do with uh, his his clout, his popularity. Yeah. Um, he didn't do as much of the off offseason freestyle type stuff as yeah. Sasso Lee Carr, insert big name. Uh, hey, this hey. popped in my head. Do Is there going to be... Are we going to enter an era where there are going to be fewer undefeated champs? Does that make sense? Like, more guys who are prone... And, and not, like, 12 losses, but, like, more guys who are prone to be, like, three or four lost guys in regular season, but... They're the best guy, and they're going to win so. the Blaze. Yeah, I just think there's so many of these weights have three, four, or five good guys that they're going to lose matches. Yeah. I Hopefully. Mean, I think it's geez. awesome. <clears throat> yeah, me too. I mean, I don't think they're going to uh, – we, we kind of been spoiled with the Dakes and the Taylors and Nolfs and Nichols um, that just mollywop everybody. Uh, and. Right. I don't know. In in addition to your question, I think it's a very good point, Nomad. In addition to your question, are we going to see less three timers? I mean, yeah. three timers been growing on trees lately. Yeah, there's quite a few. Okay, with three timers, <laughs> let's go. Solid show, fun times. Kyle, our main man in the back. Feel free to play us out. You want to just tell us if the music is playing because I won't know potentially. Hey kids, even come on the God Voice if you want, uh, Kyle. Uh, but yeah, music or not, thank you guys for listening to episode 388 and all these other episodes before because we know all of you has have listened to every single one because mm-hmm. you love wrestling so much. Um, we will be back next Tuesday. Tuesday, right? Yep, right. Ben Askren fights really soon. Where are you going, Kyle? I'll be in Dallas at the opening with Colby Paxton of Full Football. What? Oh, opening school. What? What? Hey, guys. So, next week, well, like, next weekend's Russian Nationals, so we'll be doing some Russian National stuff. And then weekend after that is Yasser Dogu, Yashar Do. So we'll be doing some stuff about that, and you guys are going to be really excited because there's some cool stuff that's going to happen at Yashar Do that you're going to find out about soon. Live on Flow Wrestling. Yeah, Live on Flow Wrestling. And then we're starting to get Fargo rosters coming in. So we're going to be putting Fargo rosters up on the site, and we're going to have Fargo. So you guys are about to have a really cool bout next three weeks. It's you're garbage. Really that you'll like say, it. It's Willie, is it not garbage that he'll call it Yashar Do, but he won't call it Fargo? It is. He totally, called, I, totally and then inconsistent. You got Talk him Ken pronouncing it Yasher Doe. You got Spay putting little accent marks on it. <laughs> Diacriticals. I'm still oh upset about the, the you and your Regan. Yeah, me too. At least call it Farjo. Uh, thanks so much, guys. See you next Tuesday. Not Kyle. Boom. <laughs>